In today's video, I will talk about the bicipital radial bursitis of the elbow on MRI, and we will also solve this case here and see how it goes. So before we dive in, just a few updates here at this point. I have been working really hard on my new homepage lately and I added a few new things and you can see here the biggest announcement basically is that I'm now actively promoting my virtual MSK radiology fellowship. This is a one-on-one -on -one teaching program where I teach other radiologists in an online session once a week and we go through cases where they struggled or had questions with that they encountered over the last couple of days basically. So it's very uh, personal and it's really high yield because we are just focusing on areas where the other uh, or the fellow actually uh, is looking for a little bit more guidance. And I've been doing this for 11 months now already and currently working together with four fellows. And the reason why I'm now actively promoting this is because I'm looking for my next few fellows. So if you are interested and really want to get to that next level in MSK radiology, basically what a proper fellowship should do, then go check my homepage and there is a video that explains a little bit in more detail how the process works. So before we go through the cases, we have to understand the anatomy of the bursa. And here you can see a illustration where we have the distal biceps tendon inserting into the radial tuberosity. And the bicipital radial bursa is here at the very distal portion before it inserts actually onto the radial tuberosity and it goes kind of like around the tendon if the radial tuberosity is looking anteriorly the radial tuberosity anteriorly so this is anteriorly and then the bursa kind of goes around the distal biceps tendon and once you start going into pronation what happens is that the radial tuberosity goes around the ulna here very close proximity and through that it pushes away the bursa on the ulnar side and ultimately in uh, this final pronation position it's completely compressed here so there's no fluid left here anymore so you have kind of like this tear shaped morphology here here a just a quick recap of a topic i covered in another video and you can find the link to this video in your upper right corner so the distal biceps tendon has actually two components um, this is not very well known and you can see here the illustration we have the long head and the short head at the level of the shoulder everybody knows about that then they go to the muscle belly if you will and then distally they can sometimes show as two separate tendons or at least two separate components of one tendon and as you can see here the long head of the biceps of the distal biceps tendon inserts more proximally so despite the long name it's shorter distally kind of like a way to remember this and the short head is going more distally so why is this important because you can have isolated tears or stuff of both of these Heads. Now just to keep in mind, if you want to see the video, go check the link in your upper right corner or in the description down below. So here just a normal case, uh, we can see the distal biceps tendon and you can see here how there are two different components. So we have the short head on the more here uh, ulnar side and the long head on the more lateral or radial side. And they come down together, we can see the lacertus fibrosus, they go together, they kind of like then go on to the radial tuberosity. And this is about the level where we expect the radial or the bicipital radial bursa, so around here. And we can quickly have a look at the fluid sensitive weighted sequence where we follow the tendon below. So there is no fluid present here normally. And if you see fluid there, it's consistent with bursitis. And uh, you, normally you don't have ganglions down here. You can have ganglions up here a little bit more uh, proximally because they are somehow connected to the joint. And this is not the case at the level of the bursa, which is below the joint. So here now, uh, the first clinical case, and you can see, again, we have the distal biceps tendon, kind of like the two components, they fuse together here. And now you can see fluid on either side of the distal biceps tendon, kind of like the bursa is going all around it. And it's inserting then onto the radial tuberosity. However, we have a high grade partial tear here, maybe one 
or two very thin fibers are still there inserting. That's why we also don't have a lot of retraction. And it's frequently, so kind of like this bursitis is frequently associated with pathology of the tendon itself. So either from tendinosis, partial tears, or even full thickness tears. Um, just to keep a lookout for the tendon if you see fluid at this level. Here in a MR with a little bit uh, worse image quality. So, but we can see the distal biceps tendon and fluid around it. So this is kind of like what we are looking for. And you also see that the signal of the tendon here is very abnormal. It kind of gets this kind of caliber irregularities. It's different in signal intensity um, and certainly consistent with partial tear and tendinosis. Some of it, let me zoom out a little, might still go down to the radial tuberosity here. And so this position is also a little bit more into the supination kind of uh, position rather than a full pronation. But we can see here also extensive fluid around the distal biceps tendon, um, this time more on the radial side here as in the illustration, but um, it's also certainly on the other side as well and some irritation all around it as well and also down here. Now don't get confused with this tendon. So this one here is the tendon of the brachialis muscle and it's inserts into the ulna and not onto, onto the proximal radius. So that's just something to keep in mind. So here in this next case, we can start at the top and let me zoom in a little so we can see the muscle and the muscular tendinous junction here or myotendinous junction and then the distal biceps tendon and now we start to see a large fluid collection around the distal biceps tendon and the tendon itself is abnormal it has high signal some of it even fluid like and it's swollen quite a bit so there is severe tendinosis with uh, partial tears it's not fully torn some of it might still go through and also not a lot of retraction happening and if we go at the top we can see the lacertus fibrosis still intact there and there is some uh, stuff inside this kind of distended bursa as well at this level with uh, kind of like an intermediate position between between um, supination and pronation there is not much fluid on the ulnar side some of it up here and most of it is actually on the radial side uh, and here you can also see how it goes around so it's kind of like very extensive uh, bursitis here now interestingly in this case they gave gadolinium and that's frequently uh, performed because patients present with mass antecubital mass or something and or, or they get an ultrasound and um, someone suspects a mass or a sarcoma or tumor or whatever so it's important to keep an eye uh, to give gadolinium now here you can see let's start again on the top how we go down we see extensive enhancement so very extensive enhancement also all this kind of inflammation here the tendon or the tendinosis components here this one not enhancing this is this quite thickened stuff here and then it goes all around here so it looks quite ugly and it can easily uh, get interpreted as a mass uh, so some kind of sarcoma or some other worrying lesion when it's just a chronic bursitis and again associated with tendon pathology now let's come to the last case and I posted this case on my uh, Collective Minds Radiology private group where all my patrons can join and so there you have on Collective Minds in case you don't know you have access to the original DICOM files of such cases in a anonymized fashion and basically people can then either post cases and ask questions and people can discuss and here I posted this case and wanted to know what my patrons think about the case because it's quite an extensive case as we will see here just in a second so they went through and to post it here on their differential diagnoses which we will see here just in a minute so um, if you're a patron already go check the original files here if you're not a patron consider to become one and you get access to stuff like that I'm now uh, trying to implement this more so get a little bit more interaction here with original DICOM files because I think it's a better way to learn. Now for the case here we can see this uh, extensive finding here this mass and the patient actually presented with a painless mass so no pain just the mass or the swelling 
And now let's have a look at the different images here. So let's start off with a transverse T2 weighted sequence and we can see if we scroll down we have the distal biceps tendon, we have a intact lacertus fibrosus biceps tendon here. Now we already start to see this big fluid collection with with stuff inside it, so very irregular. Um, it kind of like encases the tendon a little bit here and now we start to see the tendon is severely abnormal. Uh, it's completely frayed, There is, it's not taut anymore. And here we even struggle to see a, you know, complete fibers that are actually going through. And at the radial tuberosity, there is some tendon substance left. So we are dealing with a full thickness tear of the distal biceps tendon as kind of like the pathology that we see here. And then this kind of torn material or frayed or macerated tendon substance kind of like lies and then this kind of frayed tendon stump here lies within this fluid collection here, which goes all around and down and even here, etc. Now, very interestingly enough, we have all these kind of proliferations, uh, for the lack of a better term, or debris inside this fluid collection. And the wall seems to be thickened a little bit as well. Now, if we have a look at the T1, we can just do the same thing. We can see the tendon, well, we don't see it anymore. We see this mass here. There are some areas where we have T1 bright signal here. So this could be from, it's either fat or some kind of blood or methemoglobin containing stuff like this one here. Uh, so far, not really helping us out too much. And then we have given gadolinium and now stuff gets a little bit more worrying as you can see here there is marked enhancement like really strong enhancement even along the distal tendon again tendon completely ruptured and the stump lies within this kind of mass it's a very big mass then we have the stump here at the insertion some of the left fibers there so uh, not enhancing there and then we have fluid or enhancement all around way around here between the radius and the ulna. Now, thick wall, a lot of enhancement. Now it's really not looking nice anymore. And especially on kind of like images like this, you see even a little bit of enhancement or reaction of the bone, very, some irregularities, etc. So this could now easily be suspected for some, some kind of a tumor, right? And I think there are a few key elements here now, for example, uh, this one is a good image. So remember that, that I said, if you have fluid in the bursa, how it's frequently associated with tendon pathology. And I think it's very important to realize that the tendon is actually torn. And you can nicely see here, if we follow it from proximal to distal, how the tendon comes here, this black thing. And then you can see kind of like this torn freight components, how they actually lie within this fluid collection which kind of likes not excludes but makes a mass like a expansive mass a little bit less likely as it would more push it away rather than actually encase it uh, in that manner it kind of floats there around then we have uh, all this gray stuff here a lot of it looks like just to know proliferations and also therefore we have this kind of strong enhancement um, that's kind of a, a good way to see this and in the end, my diagnosis was chronic bicipitoradial bursitis, mainly because the tendon is not like displaced, it's just torn, a full thickness tear and frayed and stuff lies in there. And all this enhancement, I classified as extensive synovial enhancement with this kind of synovial proliferations, maybe some uh, hemorrhagic component due to the T1. And also against the mass a little bit is an argument against the mass is that we have this kind of extension between the bones back here etc so that's uh, the diagnosis as of now unfortunately i cannot prove it yet so the patient will go to the orthopedic surgeon only end of may as i've seen uh, the referral letter so they are not like pushing these things forward and remember the patient has no pain and i think 
There are a few very good differentials, like if the patient would be very sick or has a lot of pain, infection would be a very good differential. And sometimes you can have um, tuberculosis or some other kind of low-grade infections in this area that can also have formed this bursitis-like changes. Obviously, I mean, a sarcoma or a tumor is in the differential and we should think about it, but look for arguments for or against it. That's kind of like uh, a thing. And sometimes if it's so extensive, patients with rheumatoid arthritis or some other inflammatory arthropathy can get this bursitis also. Um, but this patient otherwise has no known inflammatory disease. Also, gout is always a good differential and there are reports about stuff like that um, on the t2 maybe it's just a tick not dark enough but we will see so also no gout known in that uh, old lady so also a little bit less likely so this is a chronic pizzipitoradial bursitis and it looks strange doesn't it so let's have a look at what the literature is saying so let's have a quick look at this study here, or like this uh, review, it's a pictorial essay in skeletal radiology from 2019. Here you can see the authors, Huai Yap, Shao, and they show very nice images in this article. I like it quite a lot, and they talk about a little bit of the introduction. You can go read it yourself. I put the link to the paper in the description down below. Again, they show you some illustrations here, just the one that I also showed you. It's always the same. Um, but let's have a look at the images. Now, here they do some special position for scanning them, something we don't do, but uh, go read about it if you want to, with some kind of flexion, etc. But you can see how you have this mass here with extensive enhancement on this post contrast images here, very thick wall, very much like the case that uh, we just had a look at if if you go back to this image here so if we switch back and forth you can see it's pretty much the same same thing and on ultrasound i think it really shows also how you have this nice thickening here of all the synovial tissue and then they go down they have some other cases which are a little bit less pronounced as you can see here and always you have kind of like this associated tendon pathology so it kind of goes ahead with each other here again oh this one pretty much mass like could easily be thought of as a some kind of a mass whatever and it's actually just a chronic bursitis and then obviously you get the rare stuff with here with tumorous calcinosis in a end stage renal failure patient uh, but then it's quite black and it looks it looks different okay so I think the conclusion is quite good. Awareness of the entity of PCP to radial bursitis and knowledge of the anatomy and imaging features allow this diagnosis to be made and suggest a likely etiology with a high level of confidence. And that's what I did. So uh, we'll see how it goes. So to summarize, PCP to radial bursitis can look quite ugly and mass-like, typically presents in chronic stages with a painless mass. So there is always this differential of tumor or sarcoma. So just keep the bitsibitoradial bursitis in your head as a differential and if some fluid is around the distal bicep tendon, look for tendinopathy, partial tears, etc. because it's associated. Go have a look at the article, I put a link in the description down below. And yeah, that, that's basically it for this week and I hope you liked the video. Give it a like and also make sure you subscribe if you haven't already and see you next time.